Hello everyone in YouTube land. It's uh, June 1st, 2013. Thought I would just show everyone what I got at the estate sales today. First off, this little radio, little tabletop radio in a Bakelite case. Um, it was $8. Uh, it's a pretty cheap radio. One thing that baffled me at first, you see the label right there. I wasn't at the sale, I wasn't able to figure out like who made this radio, but it was kind of intriguing because it looked like a you know a cheap, simple radio, and and the Bakelite case is in really good shape, just needs to be cleaned up. So I bought it, brought it home, and uh, discovered that it's a Traveler brand radio, and it's from the very late 40s. Uh, the oldest tube in it is like 1951 uh, date code, but uh, the radio itself, I believe, is uh, a couple years older than that. Anyway, it's a pretty nice radio, should clean up well, and uh, probably won't take much to get it playing again. All right, what else did I get here? Here's a coffee mug that is McDonnell Douglas. Kind of interesting, I think a quarter or so on that. Well, some brand new photo paper, if I ever want to print out some photos on the inkjet printer. There's some brand new photo paper. And we got some 45s here. Glenn Campbell. Charlie Pride. Alabama. Mickey Gilly. And Marty Robbins. So there's some classic country 45s there. And this, this is a pretty interesting record. This is Roger Miller. And here, this is the most interesting record I saw today. Kellogg's presents Big Band Classics. So, and it's, it was released on RCA. Don't know how old it is or anything yet, but it's kind of interesting that uh, the serial company uh, put out a record here with some uh, big band classic music. So I'll have to give that a listen and see what it's all about. Alright, moving on. Found some books, some electronics related books. Most of you, this will probably put you to sleep, but hey, I have an interest in electronics and so the books are cool. Uh, this is an RCA transistor, thyristor, and diode manual, which I do not have, so that's interesting. Here's an RCA receiving tube manual. I do have one of these already, but this book is in a little bit better shape than the one I already had. So, And all these books were 50 cents a piece, by the way. This is interesting. This is a U.S. Navy training course in basic electronics. So that's pretty cool. Radio Amateur's Handbook, uh, produced by the ARRL in 1977. So it's some classic ham radio information in there. And the same thing, the Radio Amateur's VHF manual, also from the ARRL. Although I don't, I guess I don't know what the date is on this, but I'm guessing 1960s maybe. Let's see. There's a cut. Oh, 1972. So, anyway, those were all 50 cents a piece. And here's kind of the find of the day. Now, when I was a kid, I always wanted one of these. Thought it was the coolest thing. It's a Radio Shack 301 Electronics Project Lab. So, and I haven't gone through the whole thing yet, but it looks as if it's all here. It, it had been used. Oh, there's a price tag. Well, it's been uh, uh, put over with a marker, so I don't know exactly how much it cost originally, but uh, I got it for $2.00. And I see that they're currently worth about 35 to $40 if I were to sell it. So that very well may be what I do with it, is just turn it around and sell it. But anyway, it's got oh, some capacitors, some extra capacitors in that uh, little uh, case. Uh, some resistors in that envelope. Uh, here is the original manual with all of the uh, schematics and tutorial excuse me tutorial for um, putting together all of the different projects that you can do with the kit alright and here is the good stuff 
So this is the kit itself. These were cool. They just had these little spring clips and you could just take your hookup wire or components and just go between the different spring clips to wire up your circuit. As a, like there's a volume control, a tuning condenser, a bunch of LEDs, a seven segment display, a little uh, prototyping board here, and uh, some switches, and a little built-in speaker as well. So, and the nice thing about it is here are the parts bins. I'll just take one of these out and show you what they're like. So here there's a bunch of integrated circuits all ready to go and some resistors. And so there's some transistors and diodes in there. Anyway, it's pretty cool that it's uh, in, it's probably mostly complete. Not one thing that I wonder if it's not 100% complete, should I you know, find the missing parts and put it all together as one, or, if, or should I just sell it as is? I, I really don't know which way would make it worth more money or whatever. I'll have to do some research and investigation on that. And the last thing that I found today was a little one dollar coffee can full of uh, coax cable, which uh, I was kind of needing some extra coax cable. So there's, there's some phone cables in here. Oh, there's a USB cable. Some splitters. So there's a few splitters. And there's a speaker cable. And a DSL filter. I mean, those are everywhere. And the cool thing here is a PS2 to AT style keyboard adapter. Now I, I certainly will use that as I have a few AT style keyboards still laying around here. Anyway, so those are the estate sale items found today. It was a pretty productive day. And uh, oh, by the way, if anybody, any viewer is interested in any of this stuff, just let me know and you can certainly work out a deal. But uh, some of the stuff will go to my own collection. Some of it will probably head towards eBay. Who really knows, but uh, all in all, it's a fun day at the sale. I'll probably end up fixing up that little radio. It's just kind of a cute little uh, tabletop radio. So, all right, well, have a good one, everyone, and uh, good luck at the sales.